We're coming up to two years now of lessons, and this is specifically why I wanted to do this topic before we continued with the book, which is the importance of knowing the hereafter, the importance of our iman in the hereafter, to remind us of why we started this particular book in the first place. We based this series on the statement of Aisha عنها, that if the first thing that Allah Azza wa was to send down was don't commit zina, the people would have said we're going to commit zina. And don't drink alcohol, the people would have said we're going to drink alcohol. But the first thing that Allah Azza wa sent down was about the hereafter, the paradise, the hellfire, the day of judgment, etc. So when the people had accepted Islam and now their thought process is working towards the hereafter, when Allah Azza wa Jal said, this is now my part, when Allah Azza wa had said, stop drinking alcohol and stop uh, committing zina, it was very easy for them to give up. So this is a reminder for ourselves of why we're learning about the hereafter in the first place. Because there are benefits that we go through in our lives with our iman, with our actions, that will allow us, inshallah Azza wa Jal, to be people who when we hear, we meant to do, we really have that encouragement in us, that we actually want to work for it. And when we hear, stay away from this because of a warning that is there, we are strong enough to say, yes, I want to stay away from that because it's not a place I want to go to. And so if you look at what we mentioned in the Saturday night lesson for those that were here, about the proper understanding of La ilaha illallah, the believer, the proper understanding of La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, that this is the religion of Allah Azza wa Jal, and I need to submit myself to whatever Allah Azza wa Jal comes with. That's number one. Number two, that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa is my messenger. So whatever the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa gives, I need to accept and I need to follow. And then three, after that, I need to do what I can for it and because of it. Assalamu alaikum, Shaykh Murat. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he commands, we listen. Why? Because we understood, la ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. Then when that is there, it's ingrained in us, what do we do with this deen that we have? We go out and we try and spread this khayr. Just like the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu had the understanding. Now what is a encouragement, a very, very, very easy encouragement when we know about the paradise and we know about the whole fire? One of the things that unfortunately certain people have, and these are from the people of innovation, is that they think that you, when you do an action, you shouldn't do it because you want Jannah or you want to stay away from the Jahannam. No, you should do it only because you love Allah, only because you want to worship Allah. The ulama, they replied back and they said, if that was the case, why did Allah tell us about Jannah and Jahannam? Why? Why did the Prophet tell us about Jannah and Jahannam? What is the point of the encouragement there? What is the point of the warning there if we're not meant to be affected by it and work towards it? Obviously not. And then obviously the Quran goes against it itself. Where Allah talks about you know, compete with one another. For what? For Jannah. For the paradise. So Allah Azza is telling you to work for the hereafter. So this encouragement that is there, it assists the believers in understanding their religion and it helps with that motivation. Some of the other benefits that people get when it comes to knowing the hereafter, this is the other benefits that a person gets when they believe in the hereafter. Number one, the patience. A person gets patience. When it comes to doing good deeds, We've never said that in the Quran or the Sunnah that it is ease. No one's ever said that. Rather, there's hardship in it. As we mentioned the hadith of the Prophet Those who are tested and tried the most are the prophets. Then the most righteous after them, then the most righteous after them. So if we want to tread the path that the Prophet were upon, there's going to be hardship in that. Say, what makes that hardship easy to put up with? Knowing your reward that comes in the end. Just like a parable in this dunya, when it comes to a person working a hard, rigorous job, for example, those that go to the mines, he may be there two weeks in the middle of nowhere, no family, barely any reception, no shops, no friends, just him and the fellow workers. What does he stay there for? Because he knows he's going to get decent pay at the end of it. Same thing, but even more so when you're working for the deen of Allah Azza wa Jal. 
What encourages you to put up with the problems that people give you? What encourages you to be patient, continue doing what you're doing? What encourages you to leave the comforts that you have if for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal? What encourages you to continue even though you may go through some stress physically, some stress financially for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal? Because what's awaiting you is far greater. Just like the person sacrifices for a thousand, two thousand, three thousand a week. When a person thinks of the hereafter and he thinks I'm doing what I'm doing, but in Jannah, a whip span, as the Prophet ﷺ mentioned, a whip span is in Jannah is better than this dunya and whatever's in it. Allahu Akbar. All of that, for this, our actions are nowhere near. Our actions are nowhere near that. The same for Ayyadun Billah, the whole fire. With the whole fire, the opposite is true. Why does a person stop himself from going and doing the haram? The nafs wants, in the nafs al amaratun bi this nafs, it's a commander to evil. It's telling you, do this wrong, do this bad, do this haram. Go and love that, go in here, go do this. So your nafs has this mayalan to it, it has this, uh, this leaning towards wanting to do the haram. What's there to force your nafs to get away from it? Because in dunya, we also know consequences. If now, in dunya, I know I'm going to go, for example, in front of the police. I like to speed. If I know I'm going to speed, but then I'm going to get a fine because the police is right there. If I know I'm going to get caught because the police is right there, I told myself, Allah, slow down, be patient for a few minutes, wait till you get past the police, and then speed again. You won't do something in which there's a lot of short-term sweetness in it, if it's going to mean certain consequences that are not worth that sweetness. If a person, for example, when it comes to going to jail, and you're on camera, everything's there, you go and you do something, you steal a thousand dollars. There's a thousand dollars on the table, you can steal it. But there's cameras, there's witnesses, whatever it may be. You're not going to steal a thousand dollars if a man you go to jail for two, three years. You say, the, the risk is not worth the reward. The consequences are too much, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to stay away from that crime. Because you know the consequences. Tayyib, Ayyadun Bilal with the hellfire. It's far worse than that. It's far worse. How is it far worse? Now if I want to go and commit zina, Ayyadun Bilal. I want to go and drink alcohol. I want to go and gamble. I want to go and look at the haram. I want to go and enjoy the haram. I want to listen to music, whatever it may be. When I know the haram is there, I think of the hereafter. And I think about the whole fire. And I say, what is the point of me enjoying this? Whether it is for five minutes, whether it is for one hour, whether it is for one year, whether it is for an entire lifetime. But then ayyadun billah in the whole fire, I get a place in the whole fire. I get placed in the whole fire. And what's, what's the consequence of being placed in the whole fire? Now remember the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The most the person who lived the most luxurious life in this in this world, but he was destined for the hellfire. Fayyub Masuhamsa, he's dipped once in the hellfire, and then he's asked, Have you seen any goodness? What does he reply? No, Wallahi, ma ra'aytun qat. I have not seen any goodness. Why? It's not that he didn't. He thought he didn't because of one dip in the hellfire made him forget all of the goodness that he was upon. So this is an encouragement for a person to do good for the paradise. And it's a warning, it's a reminder of the consequences that don't fall into that bad. Why? Because it's not worth it. I go now and I go to the haram. What did I benefit? What did I get out of it? This, is it worth that? Absolutely not. If a person was to commit the haram from the day that he was born until the day that he died, in our lifetime, what's the maximum you're going to live? Let's just say 130 years. I don't know anyone in recent history that has lived more than 130 years. Let's just say you live 130 years. One day in the hereafter is equivalent to what? 50,000. No, this is the day of judgment. A thousand years. One day with Allah Azza wa Jal in the hereafter is equivalent to a thousand years of what we can. The 50,000 years is only the day of judgment. Okay. So is 130 years, if you were to live that long, of disobedience worth, ayyadun billah, 13% of one day in the hereafter? Absolutely, one day, one day. Not longer than that, not two, three, four, five days, one day in the hereafter? No, absolutely not, ayyadun billah, when it comes to Jannah. So this is something which is an encouragement, it's a reminder, and it helps you stay firm on it.
but also the paradise and the hellfire that keep a person humble. This is from the benefits also. That it keeps a person humble. When a person knows that everything that is described in Jannah and all of the good that I do, and then he says, the Prophet that no one will enter the Jannah except for the mercy of Allah Azza wa Jal. No one will enter the Jannah except through the mercy of Allah Azza wa Jal. Think, Allahu Akbar, who am I? Who is Naseem? Who is Muhammad? Who is Ahmed? Who is Mahmoud? Who is Khalid? Who are all of these Muslims? That they could do everything good and still it's not enough to enter the paradise. That's how great Allah Azza wa is. That we have to worship Him. Even if there was no reward. That Allah created us. Allah Azza wa on this earth. Allah, He is the one who decides what to do with us. And if He tells us worship day and night, then we have no, no choice except to oblige. Because he's our creator, he is our owner, he is our master. This is Allah Azza wa Jal. We have no choice. But we are humbled. <laughs> Why? Because Allah Azza wa Jal, you do what he told you to do, and it's so little, and still with his mercy, he enters you into the paradise. They said, even you, Ya Rasulullah, he said, even me, إِلَّا أَنْ يَتَغَمَّدَنِي اللَّهُ بِرَحْمَةٍ مِنْهُ وَفَضْلٍ Only if Allah engulfs me in his mercy and virtue, will I enter the paradise. This is from the humility that a believer has towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That how does a person live his life thinking that he is deserving of Jannah? If a person like the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, with all of the good that he done, still even him, he's not worthy of going to paradise by himself through his actions, except that Allah Azza wa has mercy on him, then how will anyone else? Who is, who is after the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam worthy of entering the paradise? We think us with, what do we have? With us, with our five daily prayers, Alhamdulillah. Maybe we read a bit of Quran, Alhamdulillah. Maybe we give a bit in Sadaqah, Alhamdulillah. Yani yeah, we do the acts of goodness without doubt. But compared to what Allah has given us from goodness? No, no way. Compared to what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam done for Islam? Then for the Muslims, then for the whole Ummah. Yani everyone's hasanat are in the book, good books of who? Of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the Prophet Sallallahu himself, even with all of that goodness, no, he won't enter paradise except through the mercy of Allah Azza wa Jal. Taban, when you're in paradise, the levels are dependent upon, after the mercy of Allah, your actions. So obviously the ones who've done more, get higher levels. But to even enter, it's only for the mercy of Allah Azza wa Jal. Again, the, the, the hellfire. A person now in this dunya thinks that they're something, thinks that they're big, thinks that they're strong, thinks that they have money, thinks that they have support. They, if the angels are commanded to drag you to the hellfire, who are you going to be on that day? Who, is, who are you? What is your strength? What is your gang? What is your money? What is your family? What are your children going to do on that day? On that day, money, wealth, children will not benefit you. Anything that will benefit is the one who comes to Allah Azza wa with a pure heart. And a pure heart obviously means pure actions. So this humbles a person where he says, who am I with everything that I think I'm doing of good? I can't even enter that paradise except for the mercy of Allah. It humbles you that Alhamdulillah, I'm a slave of Allah. Allah's asked little of me. Let me do my best. And Allah's promised me the paradise. What a beautiful Lord that I have. But then Ayyad bin Bilal on the flip side, it humbles you in the sense that, who am I to be arrogant in front of Allah Azza wa Jal? I could live my life however I want. If he says, kun fayakun, be and it is, in this dunya as I'm sitting right now with all of my strength in the world, I could be paralyzed. One of the brothers was explaining to me now, he had to get a shot, you know, your brother-in-law, he had to get a shot in the... Uh, in his 05, in the lowest part of the back, uh, Corazon needle, and he goes, the, the doctor hit a nerve, and he goes, he, he scrimped, <laughs> he used a word I can't use because of the lesson, but he goes, I scrimped like a something, and he goes, I'm sure the whole block heard me. Jayid, a, a, a person, a yani, big, strong person, able to run through mountains, your nerve gets touched, khalas, you're gone. Your nerve gets touched, khalas, you're gone. The brothers were just talking about the flu that's going around now. 
يعني big brothers ما شاء الله big and they can do flying wall kicks and everything to better Allah they can't move خلاص they in bed they in bed they can't move it's just a flu it's not the main flu this is the actual real flu now but it's a it's an actual flu it's 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 taking them and they're strong last week they're running through mountains it is what it is this is life human beings we call it insano daifa human beings we've been created weak this is our reality طيب the hereafter even if you lived the best of the best your whole life in the hereafter, you have no power whatsoever. And how are you going to find angels? Impossible. Impossible. In the hellfire, what power do you have to get out of the hellfire? Impossible to get out of the hellfire. And we're going to go through, inshallah, the paradise and the hellfire in detail in, in the upcoming weeks, inshallah. And the upcoming months, bidnillah. Impossible to, to do anything. You have no power. Your final, your final request is, لِيَقْدِ عَلَيْنَا رَبُّ Kalas. Yani, let your Lord kill us. That's it. That's, we don't even want to get out of Jahannam anymore. Just خلاص, ask Allah, Ya Malik, O oh Malik, gatekeeper of the hellfire, just ask your Lord to get rid of us. Finish us. Let allow us to die. But will it be something that is possible? No, خلاص. why? Because Allah has promised you, these people that are in it forever. So it is a place where a person will abide forever in goodness or in bad ayyadun billah. And so a person needs to make that decision now and through learning about them, this humbles you. The, an, another uh, point of benefit when it comes to learning about the hereafter is the love that you have for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we alluded to it in the previous point, the love that you have for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for what he gives you more than you deserve. And if, as we mentioned in this dunya, if Allah told us to worship Him day and night, and we get no reward, we have no objection. We're not allowed to have an objection. Because Allah created us, and He does what He wants to have. Just what we said, this is my iPhone. If I want to put a black case, can my iPhone uh, detest? It's got no choice. If I, want to put, if I want to put a pink case, can my iPhone say, please, don't put a... It, you, you are mine, I do what I want with you. If I want to give it to my friend, if I want to throw it away, if I want to put it in my cupboard, my iPhone can't object. Not only because it doesn't have a mouth, but because it doesn't have any rights. I am its owner. I am its owner. You have no rights. Taib, who is the one to tell Allah Azza wa no, you can't treat these humans like that? No one. La yus'alu amma yafalu hum yus'alun. Allah is not asked about what he does, and it is they, the human beings, the creation, they are the ones that are asked. This is the might of Allah, the power of Allah, the honor of Allah Azza wa Jal. And the more ingrained it is in us that we are his slaves and that he is our master, the better our relationship becomes with Allah Azza wa Jal. So how does believing in the hereafter increase your love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when you know that for the simple things that you do in this dunya, Allah Azza wa Jal gives you all of that reward in the paradise. Not for one day, not for two days, not for a holiday, but for eternity. For eternity. You think, Wallah, we're not deserving of it. When you think about it, Wallah, we're not, and inshallah, we're going to get into any explicit detail with the hellfire, first, Adam Billah, and then the paradise. And you say, Wallah, we're not deserving of this goodness. Whether it is the castles, whether it is the food, whether it is the increasing happiness, whether it is the no sickness, doesn't matter what it is. We as human beings, we're not deserving of it. If you think of the sins that we commit, you think of you know, the little that we do that Allah accepts from us and enters into paradise with, think subhanAllah, how beautiful is our Lord, how loving is our Lord, how caring is our Lord, how generous is our Lord. But these are part of the names and attributes of Allah Azza wa Jal, alongside learning about the hereafter, which breeds this love for Allah Azza wa Jal in your heart. But a person now, he doesn't know the hereafter. These are all consequences. If you don't know the hereafter, everything that we mentioned, it's not going to be present. A person is not going to have a care. You tell him, Akhi, then you want to get to the Jannah. A lot of people will tell you. Yeah, I mean, if they're Muslim, they're going to say, yeah, of course I want to get Jannah. But in their heart, in their actions, do you want to get a Jannah? If they were to be honest, they would say no. Not because they, the Jannah is not worthy, but because they know nothing about the Jannah. Now, if I told you, have you been to this place? Have you excited to go to this place? And you know nothing about it. Why would you be excited to go? You know nothing about it. If I told you, are you saving up to go to this place? 
And why would I be saving up for it? I'm so you're humble because of this. If you don't know about it, how are you going to be humble about it? A person regarding this flu. And so we'll go through the little things that we've done about the patience, about being humble and about the loving. The consequence is the flip side. And you see, even though there's many other benefits about believing in the hereafter, but this is just some of them. And you see how not knowing about the hereafter, how it's the reality of many people, unfortunately, in our society for their bad actions. They're not being patient. If you don't know about the Jannah and you tell someone, Akhi, give more for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal. The one who struggles to give for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal, even though he has all of his needs covered, well, alhamd, he has all, all of his needs covered, but he doesn't believe that him giving is going to lead to something better in the hereafter. How does he give? It's very hard for him to give. That's why Allah Azza wa Jal mentioned about the hypocrites that they're stingy because they don't have that belief in the year after so for them to give it's extremely hard as for the one who knows yes i'll put forward a million dollars now if i only have a hundred dollars i'll give fifty dollars no problem why because i know what's awaiting for me is going to be much better than anything that this money that this money in this world could have bought you know what am i going to buy with this million dollars if i was to give it for the sake of allah what's going to be awaiting for me over there is going to be far greater than anything in this dunya and everlasting. As Allah said in the Quran, the hereafter is better and it's longer lasting. What am I going to benefit from in this dunya? Yes, a little bit, but it's temporary and it's limited. There's a consequence. If a person doesn't know about the hellfire, and you say, Akhi, stay away from this path. This is a path that is leading to the hellfire. If they don't have that iman in the hellfire, then obviously no one wants to go there, but is it strong enough to keep him away from it? Unfortunately not. Many of, and again, all of these things we were just talking about, but like they're all linked to their belief in the hereafter. All of the things that we we're just talking about regarding you know, uh, certain crimes that are being committed and drugs and the like, all of these brothers, they all know about Jannah and Jahannam. All of them. And all of them want to get a Jannah and none of them want to go to Jahannam. All of them. But when it's told, Akhi, don't do this, it's not leading the haram money, the haram actions, the haram crowd, all of it is leading to the whole fire. Their love for the dunya outweighs their fear of the hell fire. And so they're not able to leave it. Even though all of them don't want to go to the hell fire. All of them love Allah. All of them want to go to Jannah. But because they don't have that proper belief and the specifics about it and the like, it leads to other loves becoming on top of other fears being on top of that, Hayyadan Billah. And this is a problem. So they're not patient enough to stay away from the bad and uh, be and patient enough to stick up on the good. If you talk about that, the humility that a person is meant to have. How many people that don't know the Jannah, they don't know about the Jannah, they don't know what's in the Jannah. When uh, that uh, reporter recently died in Palestine, she was a non-Muslim. She recently died in Palestine and one of the people he said, or, or they said, I can't remember, male or female, in the comment section, because the, the ulama, the mashaykh, they're saying, I mean, she's a non-Muslim, and a, a non-Muslim doesn't get a paradise. She done good, alhamdulillah, yeah, and she done good, thank you very much for the good actions that you've done. But if you died as a non-Muslim, you don't get a paradise. So someone wrote, if she doesn't get a paradise, I don't want to get a paradise. Yeah. And, <laughs> Yani, where is your humility? Where is your humility in front of Allah Azza wa Jal? This is a person who thinks that they're entitled to a place like paradise. The disbelievers used to think that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that they would ransom their way to the paradise and out of the hellfire. That's what Allah refuted them by saying, even if you had the entire world, if you had the entire world in gold, it wouldn't be accepted as a ransom on that day. You would be willing to give it, but it's not going to be accepted from you. And this is the unfortunate reality that many people underestimate because they don't know about the hereafter. They don't know about Jannah and what's in it. They don't know about the whole fire and what's in it. The, the Jews, <coughs> what did they say about the hellfire? We're only going to be in there. A.M. and Ma'dudat. Yani we're only going to be in the hellfire a few days. Yani we can handle a few days. Yani now, you know, we've, again, how many times have we mentioned in these lessons? Get a little candle that your wife bought for a nice scent in the house. 
and put your hand on it for 10 minutes and show me how big your muscles are. This is a little candle, a little flame with a nice smell, not intended to punish. And you couldn't do it for 10 minutes. Oh, I even believe he's going to be doing it in a fire that engulfs you from top and bottom and right and left and up and down and in front of you and behind you. And it's intended there for a punishment. How are you going to be able to handle that? To even say, we're going to be in there for a few days and then we're going to be out. This is the arrogance that they had because I don't know its reality. So not knowing it led to the arrogance which led to a lack of action. Similarly, that loving Allah Azza wa Jal. How many of us, because we don't know Allah Azza wa Jal, and we don't know what Allah Azza wa Jal does for us, because we, we don't think about it, even though it's clear. But we don't know Allah, we don't learn about Allah Azza wa Jal, and we don't learn about the rights of Allah upon us, and we don't learn what Allah has as a reward for us, and it leads to a lack of love, true love, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Especially those that have knowledge and I'll focus specifically on our youth. How many of our youth, they feel no connection to Allah Azza wa Jal because they have no idea about Allah's names, no idea about Allah's attributes, they have no idea about what awaits us in the hereafter from goodness and the like. This is a, a big problem. Uh, just recently, you know, when you're younger and sometimes there's songs that you hear and you don't think about it too much. Because you know, you're young and you're taken in, in the uh, in the wave in the further tide. Recently, one of those songs was on. Not that I was listening to the musical song. The song was on, so I heard it, and it was talking about heaven, and it was talking about you know, uh, heaven is a place on earth. And I'm thinking, heaven is a place on earth, and we'll make heaven here on earth. And I'm thinking, Subhanallah. These are things that when you're young, you know, people are listening to and dancing to and doing whatever they do, but you're not realizing how psychologically you're not worried about Jannah, Jannah anymore. Why am I worried about Jannah? Why? Because heaven's a place on earth. <laughs> or maybe she's a Jehovah's Witness. Allahu alam. Either way, either way, look at where simple things, because I don't know about its reality, how they look at places like here. That Inam, Jannah is here. And if Jannah is, if I'm with you, I'm in Paris and I don't need, I don't need the Paris in the hereafter. And these types of thoughts and ideas, it's affected many of our youth, many of our youth, who don't yearn for the paradise because I don't know anything about the paradise. So this is why we started this series. And now everything we've gone to up until now has just been a build up. Just been a build up to now the end. We went through, alhamdulillah, so many different topics. And Alhamdulillah, the vast majority of them, they're recorded. And they're on YouTube, Alhamdulillah, for those that this is their first time listening or the ones that are listening a little bit and not listening a little bit, the, they're on YouTube, Alhamdulillah. What is needed from that is to get to where we're going now. And for those that haven't listened, even though there's a lot of lessons, Alhamdulillah, go and listen to them. So that now when we go through the things about the hellfire and the things about the paradise, it actually resonates with the person. And a person uses the things that we mentioned at the beginning to assist them in their love for the Jannah and working towards it and their fear of the hellfire and wanting to stay away from it. Hadha wallahu alam salam muhammad wa ala ali muhammad wa sahbihi ajma'in wa jazakum khayran. Any questions about this?